Hey everyone, it is September 8th, which means it is the first day of call recording being live in Medicare Center. We're incredibly excited to be able to offer this compliant, reliable, secure, no cost solution to you guys in Medicare Center. Um, today, I'm going to walk through what the call recording process looks like, how to make calls, receive calls, and I'll even answer um, some frequently asked questions that we've at least received leading up to the rollout of this feature enhancement. Um, and just to let you guys know, this is one of many feature enhancements to come uh, in preparation for AEP. We have a lot of other exciting announcements um, and features that we'll be rolling out each week uh, leading up to October 1st. Uh, so my name is Jessica Adkins. I am the Managing Director of Marketing and Innovation here at Agent Pipeline. Thank you for being a contracted agent with us. We, um, we're very excited to be able to train you guys and offer this solution in time for, you know, the, the uh, requirements made by the CFR final rule. So you can see once I log into Medicare Center, it looks very different than what you're used to seeing. Uh, previously, you would see the option to log into Medicare app, Medicare link, or use CSG actuarial. Um, so don't be alarmed. You can still access Medicare app, Medicare link, and CSG actuarial. It's just in a new location. So in order for you to find those applications, you're going to click on your name here in the upper right hand corner and you can see Medicare app, Medicare link and CSG is available for you to access. All of your previous information with scopes, client data, enrollments, that is all still there. None of that changed at all. The only thing that changed here is just where you go to access those tools. Now, most likely if you haven't seen this already, if you haven't logged into Medicare Center since this released at midnight, um, you will receive a pop-up notification that lets you know that you now have a Medicare Center phone number. Um, there's some additional verbiage on there and it does require you to check the box saying that you did read and you understand um, the call recording process. So if you receive that notification, but you do not have a phone number listing, what you'll need to do is you'll need to, again, click on your name and go to account. And most likely you have an 800 number or something um, to that effect listed here in the phone number. So um, this is going to be your endpoint number. And what Medicare Center does is it automatically generates a phone number that is unique to you and that will be yours forever um, with an area code that is similar to whatever your endpoint number is. And we'll use that terminology endpoint number just so that we um, have distinction between your Medicare Center number and the phone number that's connected to the device that you want your calls from Medicare Center to go to. So in this example, I want all of my Medicare Center phone calls to come in on my cell phone. So then I'm going to add my cell phone number here as the endpoint number. But it's not a one and done. So maybe you want to, you know, work in your office where you have a landline one day. You're going to come in here to your agent profile. You're going to update that and you're going to put in whatever your landline is. And you are going to save that. And it's an immediate update after you get that green banner showing that your account info has been updated, then you will start receiving any calls made to your Medicare Center phone number on that office line. So you can go to your office, pick up the landline, and that's where Medicare Center calls will come to.
same thing um, if you guys use like a ring central or a 59 which um, that's commonly called a voice over IP line same process if you want those calls to come in through your ring central app then you need to put your ring central phone number here okay so again just to kind of highlight a few things here um, phone numbers are automatically created for you based on the area code in your Medicare Center profile. So you won't receive a Medicare Center phone number initially if you're using an 800 number, but once you update this phone number um, in your profile to a local number, the Medicare Center will automatically create that unique phone number for you. Um, Keep in mind that there may be some exceptions to this rule. Uh, there are many area codes that don't have additional numbers available. So in some locations, which will likely be few cases of this that happen, but um, if you are in one of those unique situations where, you know, your area code may be 304, but, um, you know, you get assigned a Medicare Center phone number that begins with 606. That probably is an indication that there are just not enough additional numbers available for Medicare Center to create a number for you. Another thing to keep in mind is that your phone number can't be changed. So let's say that you move from 304 um, and you go into a 606 area code. So even if you come in here and you update this phone number to your new phone number because you moved to Kentucky, your Medicare Center phone number will not change. It will always be this number that you are initially assigned. Just keep in mind that um, you can change where your Medicare Center phone number forwards, or you can change that endpoint number. Um, and again, you can change it to a cell phone, a landline, a voice over IP like Ring, Ring Central or Fob9, um, but you cannot change the actual number uh, for your Medicare Center account. All right, so we touched on the actual phone number for Medicare Center. Um, let's talk through a little bit about how you receive these calls. So if you provide your cell phone as your endpoint number, then all of the calls that are made to that Medicare Center number will be received on your cell phone. And those calls will ring to you like it's any other incoming call. Um, Let's go through a quick example here. I'm going to call my Medicare Center number. Now, I will let you know as soon as a caller dials your Medicare Center number, they'll hear what's known as a whisper, okay? And so the call recording actually begins as soon as the whisper is heard by the client. Um, the whisper is something as simple as saying uh, now connecting you with a licensed sales agent and you can see here my caller ID is popping with my phone number. Um, I can pop open my call script because it is required that I read that on inbound and outbound calls within 60 seconds of the conversation, right? Um, so I have that on my incoming call. Now Again, the call recordings begin as soon as that whisper ends for the caller. You won't hear the whisper, but the caller does. And it's simply a message letting them know that the call is being connected to you. Um, it technically gives, you know, the, the phone lines time to transfer so that there's not just empty space in between um, the dialing and the ringing. So, once that caller hears the ringing, they're being recorded. That means that if your callers are having a conversation while they hear the telephone ringing, maybe they're, you know, a husband and wife and they're talking about their grocery list, then you're going to hear that. That's going to be picked up on the recording. Um, and 
any inbound call that you receive, it is going to require you to link that to a client profile. Um, as you can see here on the screen, we have this link to contact here and it's highlighted in blue. So this is also what you'll see if you know you get a missed call maybe um, you know maybe you don't answer or you didn't hear it ring so your callers can leave you voicemails um, they'll be shown here in this activity log it won't say voicemail or anything like that it'll just indicate that it was an inbound call um, you can click download to listen to that voicemail and then once you know who it is, you can either search for an existing client and link that. And you can see we have a lot of call activity with this caller. Um, I've made a call to Nicole and I've also received multiple calls from Nicole. So I can also download these calls from the client profile activity, as well as open up the incoming call and make a note about whatever that call is. So I can notate on my call recordings exactly what the call was about. So for this one, um, let's say Nicole left a voicemail. This is the message. Okay. So that's very handy to have that ability to add a note and also there's three ways you can download. You can download from uh, the activity where you make the note. You can download from the client's profile main screen and then you can also download directly from your dashboard if it's listed. And if you notice that call no longer is blue and it no longer gives me an option to link. So let's go through the process to show what it looks like when you need to create a new contact. The new contact creation process is similar to what you guys are already doing. So nothing has really changed here. If you notice that phone number does not um, automatically populate in here as well. So that's something to be mindful of. You do get that, um, you know, reminder that this could potentially be a duplicate. Let's use a different number so it doesn't give me that error message. And then, of course, you can select whether this is a um, prospect or an existing client. We'll say that Benny is an existing client of ours. And so now that call recording is listed right here. And again, we can go in and make a note received call from Benny regarding MAPD options for upcoming AP. Okay, so we have that there. It's notated. I uh, know exactly what that call is about with Benny. Now I'm going to go back out to my dashboard and if you notice all three of those calls did have the same phone number so it does not auto recognize the client with that phone number in their profile. On any inbound call, any voicemail that you receive, you will have to link this manually to the client. And we'll use Nicole again. Okay. There you go. Now, what we need to talk through is making the calls, right? So your outbound calls are also recorded. Um, all of the calls that you receive to your Medicare Center phone number will be recorded. And any calls that are made 
by initiating the phone call from the client's profile will be recorded. So if you notice here, this is a hyperlink and this is a click to call feature. So we can initiate that phone call to the client. And what happens is my phone will ring. I can pick that up so that I can then hear the ringtone and it begins the call, like the dialing process out to the client. My recorded call script pops up and reminds me, hey, read that TPMO disclaimer within 60 seconds of the call. And I can go ahead and have my conversation with Nicole. Um, maybe it's a customer service call. Maybe it's, you know, a quoting and enrollment call. Um, but that's going to that's going to be made or that conversation is going to be held on whatever device is associated with my endpoint number. So again, for the example, when I initiate this call from my computer, from my desktop web browser, I am going to receive a phone call from my Medicare Center phone number. And when I answer that, it's going to begin I'll hear a ringtone. It has dialed out to my client at this number that I clicked. Now, the good thing about this outbound calling is that you have to initiate, initiate the call from the profile. So maybe you are on your tablet. Maybe you're on your cell phone. Um, however, you can get to your Medicare Center client's profile and click this phone number, you're going to start that outbound call and it is going to be recorded regardless of where you are, what you're doing, what phone you're using, anything like that. Um, if it is initiated from the client's profile, it will be recorded. And you can see here, this is the call that we just made. All right, so we added the note there. Um, let's talk a little bit about the details. So if you notice here, this really hasn't changed. You still have your provider, prescriptions, pharmacy information. Um, you know, at any time, you can pull up that call script. That is a new thing that's gonna be added here. Just because, you know, if you do initiate this call, um, you want to make sure that if the automatic screen pop doesn't show up for the call scripts, that you do click that. All of your scope details, you have that. You can send it. Um, preferences for direct email, phone calls, if that's how they prefer to receive communication. Make sure, you know, you list and identify permission to contact through text. And of course, if they decide they do not want to be contacted, you want to make sure that you do change that to a DNC slash loss contact um, so that you don't accidentally give them a call. And of course, you can move directly into the quoting and enrollment process. Now, the call recordings, again, as long as someone is calling that Medicare Center number, you're going to be recorded. So maybe you don't want to quote and enroll using contact management. Um, I would definitely recommend it simply because once you get into this contact record and you do have all of these call recordings and you do, you know, send a scope or complete the enrollment. Everything is date stamped, so it will be very easy for you to come in here and, you know, say, okay, there's the scope, there's the call. I'm going to go ahead and download those, put them in a nice secure package to get that sent up to a carrier. Again, make sure if you're downloading MP3s of calls for enrollments or anything that contains PHI or PII information, 
that you keep compliance and privacy and security in mind. You want to make sure that you don't store those on your desktop and you want to make sure that if you are sending call recordings and other documents that do contain, you know, PHI, PII, HIPAA, any, anything like that, that you are using a secure email platform and there is some type of encryption um, to secure all of that information to protect you and your client. So having all of that right here in one spot is incredible. Um, you know, it keeps you organized. I think, again, it's, it's very easy for you to come in here and identify exactly, you know, when the call was made um, and when, you know, you got that scope signed. Well, let's say when it was completed, right? So right there, you have all of them together um, and you know which is which in this case. Um, but you can certainly go into Medicare app and move forward with the enrollment. Uh, you're not going to be disconnected. Your call is still going to be recorded. And if you are in Medicare app, Medicare link, or even CSG submitting enrollments, um, you know, when you come back out here to your dashboard, you'll see that incoming call listed and you'll link it to the client's profile. So regardless of how you actually submit the enrollments, whether you were, you know, submitting your business through Medicare app or through Medicare link, um, maybe, you know, you have to move over and use the carrier portal, you're still going to have your calls recorded um, if they use that Medicare center phone number. Now, another question that I get is that caller ID ribbon, right, that's shown at the top of the screen when we get that incoming call. Um, is that, am I going to see that everywhere? You know, um, the good news is that any of those incoming calls that are made to your Medicare Center phone number, you will see that caller ID ribbon or banner at the top of your Medicare Center web browser. So it doesn't come in as like a browser notification, but you will see that light blue color um, located under this main menu. And I'm going to walk through a couple of examples so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, that will pop up within Medicare Center. And then of course you are given the option to view the script, link the contact. Um, at the time you see the banner, your endpoint phone should be ringing by then. And the connection happens again, once that caller hears the whisper, uh, most likely the caller has probably heard um, about two rings by the time that your phone rings and that that caller ID banner appears. Uh, so keep that in mind. And yes, yeah, so getting back to the point about that caller ID banner, um, if you're in the process of completing an enrollment in here in your contact management, um, let's just say we're in the process of running quotes. We're doing we're doing some quoting here. You will absolutely still see that pop up. So let's select three quick plans to do a side by side comparison. So I can show you. Um, so let's say we're in person having a conversation with a client, or maybe I'm on the other line. I can even be on the other line um, in the process of doing an enrollment, right? Well, a caller can still dial my Medicare Center phone number. I will still get this pop to let me know that I have a caller. So it doesn't matter if I'm in the enrollment or if I'm here comparing plans, I'll get the pop and then I'll also be able to go back to that dashboard and link the contact. Or if I want, I can link the contact right now while the while the call is still coming if I know who that phone number is. So um, again, you do have a voicemail. The voicemail um, basically 
it says, you know, please leave a message for, and then it'll say your agent first name and last name that you have listed here in the profile. Um, and then listen to it, you know, come back in, click download. Now, because we linked it during the incoming call, it's not going to be, it's not going to highlight as blue. So um, I would recommend if you want to make sure that you have a very separate like process to identify any voicemails, I would not link as they come in. I would just leverage this activity log here in the dashboard so that you can see, you know, any of your voicemails that you get are going to come in and they're going to be shown as blue here um, in the activity dashboard and then you'll link out to the client. So the good news is that if you're in here and you're doing, you know, maybe updating contacts or you're adding contacts, Maybe if you're in Learning Center, that is going to pop up. So you're going to know when you receive a call and your endpoint number will also ring. Now, one thing that I will say is that if you are in Medicare app, if you are in Medicare link, or if you are in CSG app, you will not have this pop. Um, your phone will still ring. So your endpoint phone, that'll still ring in. Um, but you will not have this pop up with the um, caller ID and inbound notification. It will be available here back on your dashboard in your activity log. Um, again, this is why I would not link when you have a missed call just so you can easily identify, hey, this was a voicemail. I need to listen. I need to link the contact. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, I love that regardless of what you're doing, you are still going to have recording um, on, on any of those calls that are made to your Medicare Center phone line. So that brings me up to um, another point that I want to I want to touch on is um, I've had a few agents say, you know, what if I get a private call? What happens? So let's say um, let's go back here to my Medicare Center phone number. All right. So let's say that. I received a private call to this number and then my endpoint direct line is this number, right? So if I receive a call to this number from my son and he's telling me about a basketball game, then that call is going to be recorded and it is going to be added as an activity. Now, if my son calls me on my endpoint direct line, which let's say that's my office line, then my office line will ring and that call will not be recorded because the call was made to my direct line and not to my Medicare Center line. Any calls made to your Medicare Center phone number, I would recommend, um, you know, trying to make sure that that is for business purposes only. Um, so you avoid, you know, maybe sharing that with, anybody who would make a private call um, that would be like a non-sales or non-customer service activity. So maybe friends and family members you don't um, give that Medicare Center phone number to. I know that you definitely, you are going to have that phone number on your social media, on your website, in your email signature line. Um, but, you know, you, you can let them know, hey, if you call that number versus my cell phone, it'll be recorded. And call recordings can't be deleted from Medicare Center. Um, so all calls made to your phone number and any calls that are initiated from that client's profile will be recorded. Um, and you, you just want to make sure um, that you remember that. You can't delete them. And if you accidentally like delete a client's profile, for example, the good news is that those also won't be recorded they also won't be deleted. So your call recordings can just be relinked to a new profile that you create for that client. 
Um, another question I got was regarding bulk export. So this probably goes back to, you know, let's say um, I need to um, send all my calls for Nicole to a carrier. I don't have the ability to select all of these calls and do a, a bulk export and put them in a nice zip file and send them securely to the carrier. So what I will have to do is I will have to manually download each of these files and then I can package them in a zip file in my downloads folder, send it that way securely to the carrier and then of course just make sure that I remove that zip file um, and any of the MP3 downloads from my desktop for privacy and security purposes. So um, another question, other MP3s, so maybe you are using a call recording platform, um, some kind of, you know, mobile app that records your calls. Um, maybe you're using RingCentral or Five9 to record calls, some other application that can, um, you know, record that phone call in some way, shape, or form even if it's in a different format, even if it's a WAV file, um, which WAV files are not encrypted, so avoid ever, just don't do that. <laughs> um, MP3 files, those cannot be imported and stored into the client's profile. So you cannot add or import or upload any other call recordings and add it to your Medicare Center client profile. Um, the reason is because all of our calls, so or all of your calls rather, um, both inbound and outbound, those are recorded and they're, sec they're securely stored for 10 years. So anybody um, you know, that's choosing the Medicare Center as a solution shouldn't need an option to upload call recordings from another application. Um, it's also important to note that Medicare Center is not only secure, compliant, and reliable, there's no additional hidden fees. So not only is it no cost to you, to use the call recording feature. It's no cost for the storage. Um, and that was one of the concerns that many agents had was the significant amount of storage that they would have to have and the length of time because the call recordings do have to be stored for a minimum of 10 years. Um, that is a CMS requirement. So storage in Medicare Center is not only unlimited, but there are no hidden fees. Due, there are no hidden fees due to, you know, an increased amount of data use. So that can include like the number of calls, the number of contacts that you have. Um, it is 100% free to you. Uh, so Medicare Center call recording solution, super excited about it. And it's definitely, um, the way to go. Um, I can't be more excited about it. So if you ever want to talk about Medicare Center call recording or anything about Medicare Center, reach out to me and my team. Um, I have a team, Nicole and Seaver, and we all handle any tech support tickets and, you know, try to do training and things like that for all of the agents that we work with. Um, and you can reach us by emailing agent technology at agentpipeline.com. I'll have that readily available for you guys here in the ARC so that you can see that and um, do a click to email and reach out to us that way. So another thing, you know, if at any point, um, you know, you decide that you may have opportunity elsewhere um, and you no longer work with an integrity partner, You'll lose, you know, if you lose access to Medicare Center, um, our Medicare Center development and compliance team can provide you those call recordings at your request. So don't think, um, you know, you'll lose the recordings. We are required to keep them for 10 years, so you will always have access to those regardless. 
And um, again, you know, if anything happens where you accidentally do delete a client profile, those call recordings will still be there. If, you know, for whatever reason you are missing a call recording, definitely send an email to agent technology at agentpipeline.com and we'll work with the Medicare Center team to see if we can't recover that or what happened. Um, so that's a very high level overview of the inbound call process, um, which, you know, you have your screen pop, you're going to see that screen pop on any, you know, page that you're on here in Medicare Center, that screen pop will not happen in any of the other pathways to enrollment. Um, and you can change where those incoming calls go based on this profile, your account profile that you can update here and change your endpoint number. And again, that can go to a cell phone, a landline, any type of phone line you can think of, and you would answer any of your Medicare Center calls on that device. So super exciting. Um, and then of course, any of your outbound calls that you make, as long as you initiate those here in Medicare Center um, from that client's profile, then that call will not only be recorded um, and added as an activity in your log, but that will also ring into your endpoint numbers device. So if that is your cell phone that you have listed as your endpoint number for Medicare Center, then when you make an outbound call to Billy Bob, then your cell phone will ring. And when you answer, you will hear the phone ring as if you dialed Billy Bob's number yourself, but you just initiated that through Medicare Center, um, through the client profile. So again, um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to agent technology at agentpipeline.com. Work with your marketer. Um, they have a lot of knowledge about call recording, about Medicare Center, and some upcoming feature enhancements, which do include um, lead center integration. We're excited about that. Uh, and we have a mobile app. Um, so an actual application that you can go to the Apple Store or Google Play Store and download, um, that will also be available and it will have all of the same features um, that you see here as far as the call recording, the scripting, um, and downloading calls, all of that will be available in that mobile app. So uh, look for more training um, in the upcoming weeks. Look for upcoming announcements on new enhancements. And it, again, as always, reach out to us if you need anything at all. We're always happy to help you guys. And we appreciate you choosing Agent Pipeline. Um, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoy your first day of call recordings. And um, let us know what you think. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in.